To understand more about the situation with the Atlantic cod, one needs to understand the background and current situation that has been occurring with the species. The Atlantic cod, Gaddis mora, is a demersal genoid species that is found on the eastern seaboard of the United States and in European seaboard. The Northwest Atlantic cod is the focus of this debate primarily. The cod is currently being managed and assessed in two stocks, the Gulf of Maine and Georgia's Bank heading south. Commercial fisheries occur year-round and primarily use the otter trawls and gill nets as gear. Recreational fishing of cod occurs year-round and has a peak in the season in the summer months heading in towards autumn. Cod can develop to be up to 51 inches and between 55 and 77 pounds. They have a max lifespan of 28 years. Currently, most of the catch is between 2 and 5 years of age. By the middle of the 16th century, and for over 200 years after that, cod made up 60% of all the fish eaten in Europe. This is what drove the development of international commercial fisheries in the 18th century in the Boston and New England areas. The catches of cod and other fish that were in George's Bank were so large that New Englanders were able to expand their trade to not only Europe but also the West Indies, traveling between George's Bank and the Caribbean in the 1700s. George's Bank cod fishery was unregulated for most of the time. Although it did not appear to exceed the maximum sustainable yield, the population of cod seemed to be resilient to heavy fishing according to historical assessment activities and management programs. It was not until the 1980s did the cod population show a sudden decline, where the fishing mortality and efforts hit record high levels. The U.S. and Canada have tried to set up management plans separately to save the cod populations in George's Bank, but have been unsuccessful. Next, we will hear from Peter Shelley, an attorney with the Conservation Law Foundation, to get his opinion on the direction the stock is heading. The recent decision to cut the amount of codfish that New England fishermen could catch by upwards of 80 percent and all the hardship that th those cuts would uh, bring to fishermen and fishing families. But there's also another story that isn't being told, and that's the story of Atlantic cod itself. This is the fish that was the first fishery in the United States. It's the fishery that supported this uh, industry for 300 years. And it's a fishery, as you can see from this chart, that is collapsing. The goal of the New England Fisheries Management Council is to reduce fishing mortality to a sustainable level. If this goal is reached, the cod fishery off of Georgia's Bank in the Gulf of Maine will be allowed to rebuild. A larger, healthier population of cod will allow the fishery to resume its operations. At sustainable levels, fishermen can provide cod as a valuable food resource while maintaining the stock for future generations. This requires fishermen and managers from Canada and the U.S. to share knowledge and work at keeping the cod at target biomass levels. Cod abundance has decreased significantly across the Gulf of Maine and Georgia's Bank. It has been decreasing since 1963 and is currently at very low levels in 2005. Cod this size used to be caught regularly, but today this would be known as a trophy fish for an angler. Cod have been fished so heavily that large cod like these are almost not existent in the Gulf of Maine and Georgia's Bank. Growth rates currently differ between the stocks, even with the same exploit through fishing gear types. The Gulf of Maine has historically had a slower growth rate period than the Georgia's Bank, but it has been increasing over the past decade. Commercial fishermen are able to harvest cod year-round. The two most common techniques are otter trawls and gill nets. Both of these techniques are very successful ways for catching cod, but they have their downfalls. <laughs> Under current regulations, there is thousands of pounds of bycatch thrown back overboard dead from otter trawling. This bycatch can be anything from small cod that are too small to keep, to large halibut that are not supposed to be taken. Gill nets are able to catch anything that swims through them, so the amount of bycatch is huge, and sometimes includes marine mammals such as sea turtles and dolphins. Another style of fishing is lawn lining. This is where a set of hooks is set up across the bottom of the line for a certain distance, usually a few hundred yards, and is then checked daily by the fishermen. Any fish that likes the bait being used is going to be caught, so there is a wide variety of bycatch using this technique. There are restrictions on the size of fishing gear in certain areas to reduce the habitat impact. Areas close to fishing year-round are used to protect spawning habitat. Voluntary measures are used to reduce the interaction between fishermen and marine mammals. Area closures are used to prevent overfishing from happening on one specific area, especially if it's the main target area for commercial fishing. It is also used to protect areas from otter trawling, which is known to destroy bottom habitat. Minimum size limits are used to ensure the fish are able to grow to reproductive age. 
However, there is a problem. When these small fish are caught in otter trials and gill nets, they are dead by the time they reach the boat. Just because fishermen have to release them does not mean they will survive. The Magnuson-Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act is the primary law governing the United States coastal waters. Its goal is to conserve and manage the fishery sustainably. It also protects the stock from foreign pressure, which severely depleted the stock in the 70s. It created eight regional fishery management councils, thus further developing the domestic fishing industry. One important aspect of the 2006 amendment is measures for accountability of those who exceed annual catch limits. You know, they had these spasms of fooling around with a particular stock. They didn't really fool with all of them at once. So you could try and turn your attention to other things, but now there's no place to turn. And these funny shaped boxes here are large closed areas that have been closed since basically the mid 90s. Regulators say they have no choice. Oh, We've been trying to rebuild groundfish stocks since the mid 90s, particularly the two cod stocks. And we, at times we thought we were making progress, at least a little bit of progress for some of the stocks, but we haven't been. And now things have actually gotten worse. They can't say for sure why cod stocks are so low, but blame a combination of overfishing and rising water temperatures. Some fishermen question the science behind the new regulations, which still need to be approved by the U.S. Department of Commerce. The latest cuts are expected to mean a loss of $15 million or more to the already struggling $80 million a year industry. If the only way to save a fishery is to completely destroy the fishermen, then that's bad policy, that you have to find a way for the two to coexist. But as long as the fish are threatened, so too is this New England tradition. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, Hampton, New Hampshire. The New England Fishery Management Council reduced the quotas by 77% in the Gulf of Maine and in 55% in Georgia's Bank which will stay in effect until 2016, severely impacting the livelihoods of fishermen all over New England. For example, fishermen who made 100 ships last year will likely make less than a third of that amount this year. Lack of communication has created differences of opinions between fishermen and managers. Some fishermen argue that the fishery does not need restrictions or closures, and the stock is stable and ready to be fished. Managers must fight to preserve the fish stock and at the same time maintain thousands of jobs for fishermen all over the northeastern United States. Any reduction in quotas negatively impacts the livelihoods of these fishermen. Yet, if they expect to preserve this way of life for their children, the stock must be allowed to heal. As one councilman even stated, I do not deny the costs that are going to be paid by fishermen, families, communities. They are real, and they will hurt. On the other hand, the Fisheries Council stated that without these cuts, there would be no more cod left within the next decade. It is a tough decision, but it will be interesting to see how it all pans out. Our ideas for new policy include a decrease in fishing mortality. Current estimates show that cod fishing mortality is somewhere around 0.5 fish per recruit. Ideally for cod, according to the last stock assessment, you would like to see fishing mortality at least half of the current 0.5. In order to restore the fishery, we need to bring the fishing mortality somewhere between 0.1 and 0.2. Our next policy decision would be to increase net mesh size. Increasing the net mesh size would allow the smaller fish to escape and would also reduce bycatch. This would be preferable because it would increase the chances that you are catching the fish that have already had the chance to spawn and allowing those that haven't to escape. This would ensure that fish are able to grow to maturity. Our last policy decision would be to implement a catch-share fishery. To achieve long-term ecological and economic sustainability of the nation's fishery resources and fishing communities, NOAA encourages the consideration and adoption of catch-shares wherever appropriate in fishery management and ecosystem plans and their amendments, and will support the design, implementation, and monitoring of catch-share programs. The idea of catch-shares. Each fisherman gets his own share of the quota. Quotas can be sold, traded, or even leased. This allows fishermen to choose where they want to fish so there is no race to the fish. Rejected outcome. Allows fishermen to target healthier stocks and prevent other stocks from becoming too overfished. Fishermen can sell their quota back to the government for some compensation. The Environmental Defense Fund offers a different approach for recovery that works. It's called catch shares. Under catch shares, scientists determine the health of a fishery and how many fish can be caught sustainably. 
fishery managers set an overall limit of fish the fishery can catch that will leave enough in the water to sustain a healthy population. The scientifically determined catch limit, or total allowable catch, is then divided up among the fishermen. Each is allotted a percentage of the total. The portion a fisherman can catch is known as a share or quota. Captains can fish whenever they choose, in good weather when fish prices are high, to catch their share. Because they're fishing more carefully, fishermen catch fewer undesirable discard fish, known as bycatch. As the fishery recovers, the overall catch limit increases, as does the amount of fish each fisherman can catch. The 2004 assessment of the fishing mortality in biomass indicates that both cod fisheries in the Gulf of Maine and George's Bank are in an overfished condition and continue to be overfished. However, hope remains for cod stocks as new management decisions are being implemented, which are based off of increasingly improved scientific research.